My name is Chris Griffiths. I'm Emeritus Professor of Dermatology at the University of Manchester, uh, Adjunct Professor of Dermatology at King's College London, and I work part-time as a consultant dermatologist at King's College Hospital, also in London. And I've been a dermatologist, a clinician in dermatology for 40 years since I started as a registrar at St Mary's Hospital in London. And for the majority of perhaps maybe all of my career, I've been interested in inflammatory skin disease. I'm not an epidermolysis bullosa expert. I don't manage or uh, treat um, those unfortunate people who have epidermolysis bullosa, but I think my expertise in uh, other skin diseases, particularly inflammatory skin disease, is highly relevant to how I think the management of EB will um, pan out over the next few years. Well, repurposing of um, medications is really taking uh, a medicine that's been approved, maybe through NICE in the UK or through other FDA in the United States, for um, treatment of one indication, one disease, and taking that drug and using it for another disease. And that can happen um, either through science, understanding the, the uh, basic mechanisms that are common to those two seemingly disparate diseases, or, or by serendipity, by chance, by informed observation. And I think a lot of the so-called breakthroughs in medicine have come from observation and serendipity, not necessarily a linear process. In a disease such as psoriasis, which is common, one in 50 people, compared with a disease such as epidermolysis bullosa, which is a rare genetic skin disease, which in the UK, probably only one in 23,000 people have EB. So putting that into context, if one was in, in London and saw a double-decker bus coming down the road, you'd know that in that double-decker bus there may well be one person who had psoriasis. But putting it into context, you would have to wait for about 450 buses to come down the road before you found that one patient with EB. Now those numbers are very important because, as I was saying, the pharmaceutical industry is commercially driven. So to uh, do research and develop new drugs for a very rare disease doesn't make financial sense. The reason I say that is that it costs about 800 million pounds, maybe a, maybe a billion pounds, to develop one new treatment for a disease. It takes maybe 15 years or more to go from identifying those initial compounds to actually get them in license by the FDA or by uh, NICE and along the way maybe only one out of 2,000 or one out of 2,500 compounds actually makes it. So that's a lot of investment in time and money to actually get to get there. So what can we do in uh, management of EB to take advantage of what's already gone before? And I think that there are drugs which have gone through that process, they've gone through those hurdles and then they could then be repurposed into EB if we believe that on the scientific basis it makes sense or maybe it might just happen just by pure chance. Well, I think that the, a lot of these um, signs and symptoms of EB, you know, pain, itch, poor wound healing, inflammation, all of those are um, produced in some way through the immune response. And I believe, this is my prediction, that by repurposing drugs which are used in atopic eczema, in psoriasis, for the purpose of EB, EB, maybe earlier in the disease process than we would have done previously if they work, and we can use them over long-term maintenance, would considerably improve the lives of people with EB. I'm not saying we're finding a cure at all, but we're going to reduce those symptoms, the ones I've just mentioned, and that would improve people's lives, absolutely for sure. And I think I can say that from the fact that I'm, you know, I look at EB from a standpoint of being a dermatologist with expertise in other areas. And I think I can look at it in a very objective way because I have no money in the, in the game, I have no skin in the game. I, you know, I, I leave it to others far more skilled than I to treat these patients. But I guess that you know, one should always be looking at how one can connect the dots between one skin disease and another. And one of the problems we have in, in dermatology, I think it's in medicine as well, is that we don't talk to our colleagues enough. 
So I go to meetings where people talk about psoriasis, they talk about inflammatory skin disease, but they don't talk about EB. And the EB um, community don't come to meetings where we're talking about psoriasis. That cross-fertilisation is absolutely crucial, and I think there should be more of that.